Follow us as we journey across the Cape Peninsula to see some of the most dramatic coastal views in the world. On this road trip, we're going to venture to the far reaches of South Africa, and along the way, we'll catch the African penguins, kite surfers, and dramatic coastal views. Let's go check it out. Our first stop is called Fish Hook Beach, one of the only beaches where there's an actual shark net. That's right, this beach is great white shark territory, and it's marked with the flag. The shark flag. In order to avoid jaws, we decided to spend our time at this beach on shore. We continue our journey around the Cape to Simons Bay. This area is called Simons Town. A lot of beautiful Dutch buildings. Simons Town is a quaint, down-to-earth seaside village with a population just under 7,000. It's a few kilometers away from Boulders Beach, the famous Penguin Beach. Here's the housing. A typical property here goes for 5.5 million rand or 385,000 US dollars. And the restrooms are cute here. There's BP and there's the visitor center. Going to the Penguin Beach. Look at the barbed wire. They made it look like it's vines. Home of the African penguin. Maximum security. Electric fences everywhere. Just beyond this residential community is Boulders Beach, one of the few places in the world where you can view African penguins in the wild. Going to see the penguins! Ooh, look at them all! Penguins started appearing here in the mid 80s and the colony grew from there. An interesting fun fact is that these penguins are monogamous and mate for life. Penguins enjoy this protected cove because it has very cold water for swimming and a large supply of their favorite food, anchovies and sardines. Look at all these birds! Our guide said that the penguins come to live here because they have a good food supply and the beach is insulated for them. But Warm water. You, you can't get too close to them because they bite. The penguins in South Africa go through a molting period, typically between November and January. During this time, they shed their feathers and stay on the beach as their feathers are not yet waterproof. Boulder's Beach! The African penguin is considered endangered and the population is only about 55,000. I love the way they walk. It's like a little waddle. All these feathers. The penguins are molting right now, so their feathers are coming off. And the markings on their face are like a fingerprint. So each one is different. We just saw happy feet. It's my first time seeing penguins in the wild. So cool. A cafe called Cafe Pinguino. Old Rand. The new Rand. Now it's time to check out the nature reserve Cape of Good Hope. Entry is 105 Rand. Poor buses here. on the Flying Dutchman. To get to the top, you can either take a five minute funicular or a 30 minute hike. Going up to the lighthouse. What is that? Hey, that's the Cape of Good Hope. 
This area is the southwesternmost point of Africa, not to be confused with the southernmost tip of Africa, which is three and a half hours away, Cape Agulhas. Portuguese explorer Bartholomew Diaz was the first to round the Cape Peninsula in 1488. He named it the Cape of Storms for the stormy seas. During our visit, it was extremely windy. King John II of Portugal later renamed this area Cape of Good Hope because of the great optimism that came from opening this new sea route to India in the Far East. From the top of the viewpoint, it feels like we're on the edge of the world. Now it's time to get a photo with the famous sign. This right here is the Cape of Good Hope, the southwestern point. After hiking the Cape, we worked up quite an appetite, so it was time to get a seafood lunch. Look at the view from the restaurant. Now we head across the peninsula. This part of the route is barren and rocky, and we're surprised to find a township. Like a, it's like a small little town. Wow. They got electricity. Not even lights, got electricity, toilets outside we cut across the cape peninsula on highway m65 and reach a kite surfing beach this is misty cliff and scarborough the beach here is extremely windy and perfect for kite sailing Kiteboarding is an action sport that combines aspects of wakeboarding, snowboarding, surfing, and paragliding all into one extreme sport. It's extremely mesmerizing to watch. After watching the kite surfers in action, it was time to head to the Chapman's Peak, an epic drive in Cape Town. On our way, we stopped at Nordhoek, a suburb of Cape Town. The name Nordhoek was taken from Dutch and literally means North Corner. It's known for its shoreline and long, wide, sandy white beaches. It's called Monkey Valley Resort. Tucked into the slopes of the mountainous Chapman's Peak is the Monkey Valley Resort, which offers uninterrupted views of the Atlantic Ocean. After pausing for photos, we head onward to one of the most spectacular drives in the world, Chapman's Peak Drive. One of the most beautiful scenic drives in the world. Chapman's Peak Drive is regarded as a major feat in engineering. It was hacked out of the face of the mountain between 1915 and 1922. You can see the granite rock at the bottom. And then of course your sandstone and your still stone at the top. Uh, 
at the top of the peak. This is hot. We stop at one of the most windiest spots in Cape Town for photos in front of Hot Bay. Hot Bay is unique in that it's surrounded by mountains to the north, east, west, and south, including Table Mountain and Lion's Head. Leopards here, but they moved them all out. And now they just have a statue. Boulders on this beach. This is one of the most incredible drives in the world. We continue the Chapman's Peak Drive onward to Camps Bay. Camps Bay is an affluent suburb of Cape Town with some of the most high end real estate and beautiful beaches. We hope that you enjoyed this video of the Cape Peninsula and get a chance to visit very soon. It's one of the most magnificent places we've ever traveled to. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more travel videos.